is the beginning. He is the homemaker that is in hand. He knows your struggle. He knows your pain. And he has the solution for them today. Because he is the alpha. He is the homemaker. He is here today. We worship you, King of Kings. We worship you, King of Kings. We honor you, our Lord, because you are alpha. You are homemaker. We invite you even into our midst today, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Take all control. In Jesus' name we worship. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I want to specially congratulate those of us that are here today. Because you are going to have the consecrated anointing. Those that are online are unable to watch us today. So everything is going to be contained in the house. So be ready for that miracle. Be ready to just receive. Hallelujah. And you know what we are talking about today? Abundance of rain. Who wants that rain? <laughs> you know, we've been talking lately for the past four weeks about preparing for an increase. Then we had a minister, a guest minister that spoke about marriage. And then we went again to a wind of change. And then we are going to be talking about abundance of rain. When God is about to increase you, there are things we need to do. We learned, when we were talking about four weeks ago, about preparing for an increase, how Elijah, after he had been told to go and cause rain down upon the children of honor for Ahab, when Ahab was the king. After he said, God said there is going to be abundance of rain. Ahab started partying. But Elijah went into hiding and started praying. He was preparing for that increase, for that rain. But last week, we talked about wind of change. When God is about to do something new, there is going to be a wind that will blow. And only plants of the same species will be able to catch that pollen that anointing that God is spreading. I know each and every one of us, if you can be here today, you are willing, you are able to receive what the Lord has in stock for us. And today God shall pour down his rain upon us. God shall pour down his rain of blessing. God shall pour down in abundance. Not cheap. My God is not a cheap God. When he wants to pour the rain, he pours it hard so that his children will have more than enough for what they need to do. There are a lot of usefulnesses for rain, or you can say water. The very first one that we're going to be talking about is water sanctifies. If you want to know how water sanctifies, see a person that just gives his life to Christ. And come and see the joy that is going to be bubbling inside that heart. Or if you are here and you have given your life to Christ, remember that day that you first say, I do. That day that you first say, I surrender. Remember the joy that flowed through your heart. Remember the hope of tomorrow that you had. That now that I am born again, Heaven and earth can fall. I know where I'm going. I've told you about a story. I will never stop telling you this story. When I was doing my believers class at Rema Chapel, and then they were shouting, oh, there is earthquake, there is earthquake in Lagos. And there was a sister that was sitting beside me, and she was rejoicing. Why? She said, what a better time to die than now that I have believed. When I was in the world, when I hear a story of there is war, I'm always afraid because I never wanted to go to hell. But if God will come today, if Jesus will come today, 
welcome. That's the joy that comes when you get the same way water sanctifies. Water cleanses. You give back to a baby today. If you refuse or you forget to wash that baby very well with water, you know what happens. There are some marks that might never be able to remove forever. Ask even those people that are in Texas in this past one week when they lost power and they didn't have water. Ask them, what is happening? Everywhere I was thinking. They had to be using what? Ice water. They will boil their eyes to be able to get water, to be able to flush their toilet. Because everywhere I was thinking. Water cleanses. So we are going to get enough of this water today so that what? We will be sanctified. So that we will be cleansed. And again, water quenches thirst. Is there anything you ever wanted? Is there anything you ever desired? That you have not been able to get. Ask an athlete that just finished a race. That is panting. <sighs> if he wants water or not. Because whenever we are thirsty. We get the water. We get what? Satisfaction. And finally on this introduction. Water causes multiplication. Uh, who is the best person you can ask? The best person we can ask is what? Is a farmer. A farmer understands the usefulnesses of water. A farmer understands the usefulnesses of water. Understand we are online now. Can somebody just please check on your phone to see if you can get a sound on YouTube and Facebook and let the technical know. Praise the Lord. Thank God, technical. God bless you. And have you sent it out, please? Yes, okay, good. Water causes multiplication. I said, ask a farmer, any farmer, that just sow a seed, plant a crop, and there is no rain. He gets worried. All my efforts are going to be wasted. But today, God is going to shower his rain. Upon you will have more than enough water that you need to sanctify you. You have more than enough water that you need to cleanse you. You have more than enough water that you need to quench your thirst. You have more than enough water that you need to cause multiplication in your life. And when we're talking about multiplication, it's in every realm. Every area of your life, in your marriage, in your home, in your studies, in your work, in your business. You need the rain. And there is going to be abundance of them here today. You are going to grab it by faith. And whatever you are, and you are hearing me, you need to do all. Grab it by faith. Because the very first thing that we talked about when we were talking about preparing for increase was Elijah had faith. And he was a man of prayer. When Ahab went into hiding, rejoicing, there is going to be rain. Ahab went on to go and do all, to go and pray. So for today, let's open our Bibles to our text today, Isaiah 18. We are going to read 41 to 46. But Lord, we want to thank you. For another wonderful day, we want to thank you for our technical department in particular for the struggles they are today and for you making a way for your voice to be heard all over the world. We are grateful because you never leave us, you never forsake us. You are always there to support us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because you know your word that is going to go forth today is supposed to deliver and liberate. Let everyone that is here in me today be liberated. Let them be increased and let there be rain. Abundant rain in their lives, Lord. And I commit myself unto you, even as your oracle. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. And let go of anything that is personal. And I take on your cloth of righteousness. 
that will make me to be able to deliver your word with confidence and courage and with power and anointing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Isaiah 18, 41 through 46. We are going to just piggyback on the scripture that we read uh, about three weeks ago. Then Elijah said to hear. Come again. Come again. Yes. Oh, my God. Okay, don't worry. I get it. I know the scripture I want. You know, that's the... Uh, it looks as if you guys are Bible scholars. First Kings 18. Forty-one to forty-six. Okay. Hallelujah. Then Elijah said to him, Go up, eat, and drink, for there is sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to drink and to eat, and Elijah went up to the top of the camel. Then he bowed down to the ground and prayed, put his face between his knees and said to his servant, go up now, look towards the sea. So he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And seven times he said, go again. 44, then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, there is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, go up, say to Herb, prepare your chariots and go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind and there was a heavy rain. So Herb rode away and went to Jezreel. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. And he gathered up his loins and ran ahead of air to the entrance of Jezra. What are we talking about here? Elijah, in the place of prayer, saw what God was about to do. But immediately he has his servant to go out. His servant did not see anything. He said, go out seven times. He went until the seventh time. He said, I saw something in the cloud that looks like the hand of man. Something was gathering. But in this place of prayer, Elijah saw it long ago. There are things that God is working. It might not be glaring, but God is working. God is doing it. We have a God that never sleeps, a God that never slumber. A God that says he's going to watch over us every day. The cloud that is forming was as a consequence of Elijah's prayer. There are three things that we are going to talk about this morning. How can you load your own heavens with clouds? That we pour down enough rain upon your life. Number one of them is prayer, of course, which Elijah did. Elijah did, as we did about three weeks ago, and as we are going to see. The cloud needs to be formed, the clouds need to be loaded. Elijah loaded the crowd. While Ahab was rejoicing, was partying, Elijah went on into his corner 
to be able to pray. Before we look at the spiritual dimension, let's look about how does cloud even form naturally. God created the heavens and the earth. He created the seas, and there was a void, and there was the atmosphere. And again, when God wants to cause the rain, what will happen? It will cause the sun to shine upon the surface of the earth. The sun will do what evaporates the water. The water will go again unseen. When God is working out something, when God is loading the crowd, people might not see it. When the sun eats up the land, it goes into the heavens and it stays there until you have enough that are gathered and they form droplets. They now become so heavy that they cannot even stay suspended in heaven again. That is somebody's blessing that we just fought today because they cannot just stay hanging. When it gets to a point that the droplets are so much in the clouds, they become so heavy that they cannot even stand. Then under the weight of gravity, they will fall down as rain. God uses sun unseen to be able to heat up the waters so that the waters can go up into heavens and then go back again to be able to flourish our land. It's a way by which God does what? Send out blessing. Send out his rain. Let me tell you, if the water evaporates and comes back upon the water, it has no usefulness. Water is coming upon water. But it has the opportunity to be able to take it from the ocean and take it upon the land where people will need it. Wherever your blessings might be located, God is going to get them to where you need them most. In the mighty name of Jesus. God is working it out. And again, in the same way as God will use the sun to eat up the land, there are three things that we can use to be able to load our own heavens. The first one is prayer. You use prayer to load your heaven. What is prayer? Prayer is telling God. And with total humility, I can do nothing without you helping me. Prayer is saying, God, if you could don't help me, I can't get anything done. And the one that is the author and finisher of our faith will always rise up to our need. The one who was the beginning and the ending, we see to it that in between the beginning and the end, we never suffer, we never lack. James 5, 13 to 18. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone in need? Let him pray. Does anybody need a rain? Let him ask for it. Because the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. Because God watches over our prayers. He watches over our needs. He watches over our pain, our struggles. And he's waiting. When are my children going to ask me to bless them? When are my children going to ask me to submit themselves unto me that they need help? When you say you can do it all by yourself, you know what God will do? Okay, go on. But there is a limit to human's ability to achieve anything without God helping us. I've told you a story before. There are some scientists that say, okay, yeah, we can do anything that God can do. They now call God to attention. God, can you come? Let's have a competition. I can make a man like you have made, you can, you have made a man. I can make a plant to grow like you have made a plant to grow. 
Okay, God said, okay, let's even start from the plants. Because I can call those things that be not as if they were. That he said, give me a seed from where the seed belongs to me. Go and get your own seed. Okay. If you give me the seed, where is the land? Okay, the land belongs to me. I own all the land. So, we are looking at a situation where everything belongs to him. Until man realizes it, that without God, we are nothing. We are limited in what we can achieve. The greatest scientists of today, they are coming to realize, after they have searched, that there must be a supernatural power somewhere that is directing the affairs of this world. How can you have a body mass as big as this earth just hanging in the atmosphere? How? How can you have all the satellites just orbiting around the sun without them coming to collide against each other? There must be a supernatural power. They realize that. And let me tell you this. If me and you know that, then the best way for us to be able to enjoy our life to get things done is for us to just say, I surrender unto you for whatever it is that you desire from me. Prayer works. It has worked. It's still working. But there are a couple of things that we need to be aware of when we are praying. Whatever prayer that you are praying must be what? According to God's will. The only thing that God can not say no to is a prayer that is prayed according to his will. This prayer must be backed up by faith. If you are saying you trust God, you must trust God that he can perform everything that you are asking him for. And once you know that, you take your action. You must back it up. Because faith without works is what? Is dead. And finally, there is no time I talk about prayer, I don't talk about this. Anytime you want things done from God, I'm telling you this, you have to justify why God needs to bless you. What's the need for God? How will that thing that you are asking God for impact in his kingdom? I need a house. Okay, is it just to satisfy your own desire? He said you ask and you have not. Because you are asking what? To consume it over your own passion. The only thing that we guarantee us having it, what is the need for God? How will this benefit the kingdom of God? Okay, I need a car, God. Why? Okay, because I need to be using that car to be able to bring people to church. Okay, good. Then my son, yeah, you got it. Because you are what? Where? You are populating the kingdom of God. I need a new job. Why do you need a new job? So that I'll be able to support your ministry. Yeah, right on, boy. You get it. But if the only thing you are talking about when you are asking God to give you is just to satisfy it, to just spend it on your own self, you are missing the point. He said that's the only reason you don't get it. And that takes me to the second point. That's a principle that works, whether you are a Christian or not. It's the principle of sowing and reaping. You sow to be able to load your heavens. You sow good fruits. You load the heavens. So that by the time the blessings are coming, I'm telling you, he said the windows of heaven, when they fall, you will not have enough room to be able to contain them. Somebody is going to be blessed beyond measure. Let me tell you, about three weeks ago when I started this series, there was something that was failing. I could see an increase in this house. I'm telling you this. I could feel it. I could feel it. And God is now telling us, how can we key in into what God is doing in this house? Prepare for increase. There is a wind of change. And I said, you have to find out which side of the wind are you. Some winds can be destructive. Why some winds can be war well, to bring blessing. The same way rain, some rain can be destructive. The same water that the farmer is using to be praying for. To be able to water his crops. Some people have it too much. They say, God, you want to kill us? 
when it comes in hurricane, a lot of people, they go into cover. When it even comes in too much of snow, because it's the same water that comes as snow. Some people are saying, this God, are you wicked? It depends on which side of the hall you are finding yourself. But everything that God has done, everything that he has prepared for us, they are for our good. John 12, 24. Truly, truly, I say unto you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a seed. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. There is something that you have in you that you have not releasing. If you are not releasing it, it cannot increase. The only thing that will make that to increase is you have to let go, bury it. The only reason why we are talking about Christianity today is that somebody has to sacrifice so that we will all live. The same way, if you want an increase in your work, increase in your life, increase in your ministry, you have to learn the heart of giving generously. He said, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground, if it does not die, it does not increase. If you do not let it die, it will remain a seed. If you have a seed of corn today, if you don't plant it, go and check that wheat forever. It will remain one seed. But that one seed, if you sow it today, it can become, even if you get a cup of corn, you are going to have several seeds inside it. And those seeds, take some of it again, plant it again. You get more cups the next season. As you get more cups, he said, a seed eventually can become a forest. That's what we are talking about. Learn the heart of sowing and reaping. Because a lot of people don't understand the principle that is preached in Luke 6, 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Shall men give unto It's not where you have given that you are going to receive. It's a man, other men, people you don't know. As you are helping other people, other people are looking for you to help you. We were talking even last week about um, helping the poor. And the Bible warned us that anybody that thought that you are standing today, you are rich, you are the boss, be careful. The boss also has a boss. And the boss of all of us is God. And Bible also tells us in Proverbs 11, 24 to 25, one gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds what is right, only to become poor. I love giving. And I love the blessing that comes with giving. And I want to encourage everyone that is hearing me today is fulfilling to give. Let me tell you this. There are times when you give, you see what your giving is doing. And the, the joy that you have is much better than the joy that you have had if you have spent that money on yourself. Because you can see your giving doing much more than you can do on your own. People will tell you, where you cannot go, let your money go for you. What you cannot do, let your money do it for you. For a lot of us, we withhold what we are supposed to give freely. And we lack. The Bible says again, a generous soul will prosper. And he who refreshes others, he himself. Will be refreshed. When I'm talking like this, when God is ready to bless the house, I'm telling you the blessing that I'm seeing in this house is not just individuals. It's going to be the blessing upon the church. Some of you might not know now, but we are very, very getting close to signing a contract on another property. 
and we are trusting God to even be able to help us to be able to close on that property, I could see the increase that God is going to be bringing to this house. And God cannot bless just the church without blessing the people. Because who is the church? It is you. When I'm seeing an increase in the church, I'm really seeing an increase in you. God is ready to open the windows of heaven to pour down his blessing upon us so that we will not have room to be able to contain it. But it comes from being able to understand the principle of sowing and reaping. Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians 9, 6 say finally, remember this, whoever sows sparingly, we also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously, we also reap generously. What you sow is what you reap. You can also apple and expect to get orange. Now that we use sow stone and expect to get something else. I pray, my honest prayer, is that each and every one of us here will be able to understand this principle more than I've ever been able to. It has blessed me. And I want every one of us to also be blessed. Praise the Lord. Another thing that you can use to load the heaven is this. Everybody knows this, but very few of us does it. Or we do it with our own power. It's hard work. Hard work works. If a lazy man is hungry, the Bible says, let him die. If he doesn't know what to work, leave him. There's no free lunch. God has given us our hands and our feet for us to be able to walk. But the only thing we need to do, we need to walk smartly. You need to learn whenever you get to your place of work to pray before you even get started. It's not of him that will it, nor him that's run it. But God has showed mercy. You have to learn to commit each day even unto God. Today, Lord God, I'm going to work, even though you know you have a job. That day, that day that you are going to work, somebody is going to be sacked. Or you are going to pray forward that it's not going to be you. Somebody is going to lose a business that they had before, that money. But you are going to pray forward that it's not going to be your own business. Somebody is going to die that day. You are going to pray forward that it's not going to be your own. Even though you are going to work, you are ready. It's not everybody that has two hands and has two, two eyes, that has two legs. It's not all of them that have work to do, even when they want to work. But hard work is necessary. Part of the work that you need to do might be to even go and find a work. If you do not have a work, go and find a job. Because why? Proverbs 14.23 tells us there is a profit in all labor. But mere talk only leads to poverty. There's a hard profit in hard labor. Be willing to work. Be available when they call you. Don't call in sick when it's time to work. Ecclesiastes 5.3 also tells us further. For a dream come true, the multitude of business and a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. A good business to thrive. For a dream to come to pass, you have to walk it through a business that you have committed to God. I want to build a house. It's not just by mouth. You have to work it out. The Bible says, how many of you will want to build a house? And we not count the cost before you get started. How many of you want to go to war? But we not see what you have in your armory before you go and face that strong army. How? He said, for your dream to come to pass, pass it through a business. And I'm praying now each and every one of us that are seated here today, very soon, we are going to be owners of our own businesses. 
I remember when we first got back, when we first got to Chicago, a majority of us then were just cab drivers. And Pastor Bayer, we pray and pray and pray and pray. The blessing that I'm seeing here is just to make all of you to be business owners, but not to be cab drivers. Before you know it, everybody that was renting houses begin to buy homes. Everybody that is working in, uh, that is driving car, they started having their own business. You know what? You know the, the, how they graduated? They said, okay, even if I'm going to drive a cab, let me own it. Then they started doing the, what, what did they call it then? This cab medallion. And medallion was very, very what? Profitable then. You buy a car, even on just one car, you will have a. Um, you will have this thing about, about 200,000, 250,000 on it that you can cash out when you say you don't want to drive again. It's only all these uh, Uber and this thing that is just making that business to go down. But what I'm talking about here is this. Don't belittle yourself wherever you are. There is a way to go higher, to go better, to do better, to do greater. When the rain is falling, it depends on what big, how big your container is to be able to contain it. See, one thing about rain is this. Even though you might not be able to hold the wind, but you can store the water. You can store the water. Once you store the water, you can now begin to now process it, use it as at when you need it. Praise the Lord. Hard work works. Because Proverbs 12, 24 says, The hand of the diligent shall be a rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Whoever does not want to work hard will always remain a worker. But anybody that wants to work hard today will eventually become what? a business owner. Probably, I'm not sure if I told you this story. There was a young man also that just got a job. I think it was in Nigeria then. Was happy. Oh, I just got a job. 200,000 naira per annum. Wow. That's a big money then. Then went to see this man. He thought he has comfort. He has, he has become. This man now told him, whoever employer he is, that is paying you 200000 do you think he's stupid? If you are not making much more than that for him, will he pay you that? He will not. He will not. So no matter the salary you are getting, if somebody is he paying you, it's not a business that he paying you, somebody is making a killing over your skills. It's time for you to benefit, to profit from your own skill that God has given you. It's time for you to use that idea for your own business. It's time to start thinking. You might think, okay, I'm small. I don't even have my papers. My God Almighty. That's exactly what God needs. Just say, God, I trust in you. You are going to make a way for me. Do you know you can get your citizenship here in this country? Even if you don't have any paper, if you have just $500,000. $500,000 they will give you on a platter of gold. So what are we struggling with? Why are we saying I don't have paper? If God blesses you so much, just set up a business and say, Lord, I'm employing Americans. Just five hundred thousand dollars they will give you your paper immediately. Immediately. They will give you. So what are we talking about? I don't have paper. No, that should not stop you. Proverbs 28:19. He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread. But he that followeth after vain person shall have poverty enough. The only way that you are going to have enough bread in your household if you know how to till the ground. You know how to work hard. And finally, do you see a man who is skilled in his work? Ah. 
this man do not sit with mere men. They always mingle with people that have become the high and mighty. That's where you belong. That's where our church should be. Joseph worked hard, even though he had a dream. He distinguished himself in the house of Potiphar. He distinguished himself even in the prison. Wherever you are, distinguish yourself. Work hard. David, even after he has been anointed by Prophet Samuel, he was still working on that Saul, King Saul, who God has rejected. And yet, 1 Samuel 16, 12 said, When David came to Saul and entered his savage, Saul admired him greatly. And David became his armor bearer. At this time, remember, David had been anointed king. But yet, he served. So, learn to serve. And serve as unto the Lord. Let me tell you, these three things that we have discussed. Prayer. Seed sowing. And hard work. Sometimes when you don't do it, people don't see you. The same way when God is flooding the heavens, we don't see the water going from the sea, going into the sky, but we know it's working every day. God is doing it every day. Anytime you see a rain, there must have been an evaporation of water sometime, somewhere. Anytime you see a blessing, you must have known that there must have been some work, there must have been some prayer, and there must have been some seed sowing. Those three things. When all things come perfectly together, the clouds in your life will begin to get loaded until it forms droplets. Those droplets are going to become too heavy to stay on their own. If you load it big enough, they will and they must come down. Everything that goes up must go what? Under the force of gravity, they have to come down. So every seed that you have sown, every heaven that you have loaded, every cloud that you have loaded, either in prayer or in seed sowing, or in hard work, we come back again to benefit you. God is about to reign, to make his reign to fall over us. And I'm going to conclude by opening, by reading John 4, 13 to 15. John chapter 4, 13 to 15. Jesus answered her and said, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I give you will never thirst. But the water that I shall give you will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw again. For adventure, there is somebody here today who has been pummeled by these strains of life. For adventure, there is somebody here that has just lost his job, or you have lost your job. Probably there is somebody here that has lost his peace, or lost her peace, or lost your health. Probably there is somebody here that you have lost something so dear to you. Probably you have lost all and become hopeless. Probably you have been searching everywhere for solutions. Remember, the very first time that Elijah started praying, he saw the cloud. But the servant did not see it until the seventh time. How much faith that you have to be able to trust God for what he has said he will give you. But if you are here, you are not yet know this God that we are talking about. Yes, you have a great opportunity to tap into this abundance of rain, abundance of help, abundance of assistance that he provides for his people.
That is some, something that you need. You need that living water in you. You need that living water that is provided only by the Holy Spirit. You need it to be able to flood your heart and to flood your life and make you never to lack anything again. God is in the business of making rain to come down unto everyone that is thirsty. Praise the Lord. For adventure, there is somebody here that said, but I have believed. But yet, things are still, I'm still struggling. Father, you need to release her. There was that rich man that came to Jesus and said, what do I need to do to be able to enter the kingdom of God? He said, sell everything that you have. Give it to the poor and come and follow me. It might be tough. But God wants us to totally be dependent on him. It's only when we say, I cannot do it, but God will do, I can do it. That is when God will show up in our life. So let's learn to release all to God. And let God bless us. If you are here today, I just want everybody to just stand up. We are going to sing this song and then we are going to turn it to the prayer. Actually, I have two songs. The first one is going to be, into my life, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come into death, come in to stay, come into my life, Lord what you are going to do, you are going to use that prayer to say, Lord, come and empower me so that I will be able to achieve, to, to, to even be able to get that rain into my life unhindered. Into my life, into my life, come into my life. Probably that will help to be able to pray that prayer. Ezekiel 36, 25 to 26. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities, from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. This is a man that is totally surrendered unto God. If you are in this position, you cannot but succeed in whatever you do. Go into, the, into prayer and say, Lord, come into my heart. Come into my life. Come and give you empowerment. Come and give me enablement in the mighty name of Jesus. Ezekiel 36, 25 to 26. Pray that prayer. God said, I will sprinkle unto you clean water. If you are here to know Christ, just say, Lord, I believe. I trust you, Lord. I confess my sin and I ask that come and be my Lord and my personal Savior. But if you're already a Christian, say, Lord God Almighty, come and renew your presence in my life. Come into my life. Don't go away. Come and stay. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Then it is then, after then, you can now begin to sing. It is raining. All around me, Rosh Kalala Bareke Boshendalaba. I can feel it. Yes, love. He was our friend until I'm wet and I'm soaked in the last. Who does not want the rain here today? If you want that rain, sing that song and use it to pray. Because I can see the rain. Is it around you? You have to call it to be in those things that be not as if they were. Until you are soaked spiritually and soaked physically. Right on Jesus. Give us our rain. Until we are wet, and we are 
Now go before the Lord and say, Lord, give me liberally the early and later rain that I might have abundance of everything you have ordained for me. Give me liberally. Give me the early rain. Give me the later rain. And let me lack nothing, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. The rain is falling. Prepare a good ground for thee, for the rain, so that your seed can grow. Ask God to give you liberally and to give you both the later rain and the early rain. Ask God to make this rain to come in their due season. There are times a farmer is praying for rain. They don't get it. And when they don't need it, the rain will come and destroy the crops. You don't want that. Ask God, I want your rain to come in due season. Because Leviticus 26, 4 says, Then I shall give you rains in their season, so that the land will yield its fruits, and the trees of the field will bear their fruits. When the rain is coming, let it come in the right season. See, when you need help, you need that help at that time. Let me, let me give you an analogy. You are struggling to pay your rent. You are praying, God, show forth for me. The rent did not come. Years after, you have not become a millionaire and somebody gives you $5,000. You understand what I'm talking about? Yeah, a rain is coming. $5,000 then will have been a miracle. You have, you have come to church. You have rolled on the floor. God answered my prayer. But after you have become a millionaire, $5,000 become what? Like a change. But you are going to ask God, when your help is coming, when your rain is coming, let it come in due season in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I always say, tell you, when you are praying, what is the need for God? You are going to pray this, this, in now, this prayer now. Make me to be your kingdom supporter. And let me give you the scripture to help you. Deuteronomy 28, 12. The Lord we open for you is good storehouse for a purpose. The heavens to give you rain to your land in a season. And to bless all the work of your hand. And you shall lend to many nations. But you shall not borrow. The key there is you shall lend to many nations. God will give you, make you to be his kingdom supporter, his kingdom financier in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray that prayer for yourself. You know why I like that kind of prayer? What you do not have, you cannot give. You are asking God, God bless me and make me to be a blessing. Amen. I pray today that the Lord will lay each and every one of you in green pastures and we guard you the hand beside still water in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When you get home, I'm telling you this, if you need to go and meditate upon that, the rain is about to fall. Be prepared. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's see.